much. Good afternoon. My name is Damilola. I'm representing Congress Africa. I'm a lecturer in Obafemi Arulawa University. This is an ongoing research, and I'm doing a preliminary research on how conflict affect women and how women shape conflict in Nigeria. Um, that's um, the highlights. Starting by the understanding that fragility and conflict affect women, men and boys and girls differently. And we are all aware that um, most of the time, conflict affects the peer, poorest and the most vulnerable group in society. And we are aware that women have majored the most vulnerable groups in most society. We had that civil conflicts um, in Nigeria and in most parts of Africa. And over the last two decades, these have doubled. And these conflicts, as we know, they are concentrated in poor countries that are characterized by toxic combination of fragile institutions, inequality, social conflicts. And the intensity of these conflicts are more because of some natural disaster, food crisis, um, and of course, the increasing threats posed by climate change terrorism, and of course we have recorded increase of displaced person. And about 2.7 million African has the largest, of course, of displaced person in the world. All these are some of the factors that are shaping international landscape conflict. And that's why it's important for us to understand the dynamics, the gender dynamics of conflict. In Nigeria, women and girls make up about at least 79% of approximately 2.5 million people who are displaced about the country. And we have more of these people in the Northeast because of Boko Haram. What's this about? As I said, women and girls in conflict situations suffer great vulnerabilities and inequality. And this is becoming a threat to their identity and their security. And we have continued to witness high level of et ethnical and religious conflict, especially in Northeastern Nigeria and some other part of Nigeria too. And as a result of this, we have um, extensive destruction of life and properties. We found that there are gross human rights violations. And um, as a result of this, it's important to understand how these conflicts impact on women and what are the roles women play in such situations. An example of case I saw in literature is violence in Jaws. Jaws violence started around 2001, and we have had eruptions of cases from 2004, 2008, and 2010. And the major cause of this conflict is because of political, ethno-religious, and indigenous settlers disputes in Jaws. And this has actually impacted so much on everybody's life who lives in Jaws, and of course, on women also. We also have an example, another case, is the Anoma case study. This is actually, this actually happened during the Nigerian Civil War. And this actually posed a multifaceted challenge to Anoma women, because these women were, these people were actually attacked in their homes. Many unarmed civilians were killed in a normal land during the Nigerian Civil War that was fought between July 6 to 1967 and January 12, 1970. What then? How has this conflict affected women from literature? First and foremost, we identify that this conflict has affected the health of women. And why did I say that? It takes an elderly person to be able to f face the multifaceted challenge that conflict poses. When there is conflict, women tend to lose all the opportunities they have to seek for help. And good health is critical to women's ability to cope well with the many responsibilities that they, they need to face when there is conflict. There is psychological and reproductive health challenges that women face during conflict situation. And most of the time, the well-being of women are lost. The standard of living drops, and this actually creates a problem. Inav inavability of resources. 
reduces the standard of living and then makes it difficult for them to assess the health, the, the health facilities they need. There's also this disability. Most of the time in conflict situations, even though you could, one would assume that women don't participate at the forefront, at the war front, they are subjected to so many forms of disability that impedes on, on their livelihood and their well-being. There's a lot of displacement that comes to play when there's conflict situation. And most of the time, when the men go out to the forefront, the women are left behind when there's what they are, the ones who are responsible to carrying the children and those who are back at home, the aged people, and then finding they are displaced, they are the ones who are in, um, in refugee camps. And so this creates a problem. And, and of course, we have cases of early pregnancy. Most of the time, young girls are subjected to rape by opposing parties, women, we have some who have to go into early marriage, even with opposing parties, is that because they want to survive? And of course, instead of thinking of going to school education, they rather think of how to survive and take care of their family, and some of them have to drop out of school. And of course, we have changing roles. Conflict tends to result in women taking on additional responsibility, and therefore, or for economic necessity, and therefore, they are forced to you know, seek for income generating activities rather than attending school. And of course, in most cases, like the example of Joss, we had employment situation becomes a problem. Those who are formally employed could lose their job. Those who are in formal settings, we have cases where markets are displaced. And you know, most market people are women. And so because of this displaced market, they, they they tend to seek for alternative means of livelihood. A lot of them have faced domestic abuse, rape, and sexual assault. We all know that some of these are the things that happen during conflict situations. And of course, economic disenfranchisement, which makes it difficult for them, makes them face a lot of social vulnerabilities. And in Nigeria, lately, we have had a lot of, even from the time, from the cases, of, a case samples I, I made, we have adoptions of women and girls. Um, most of the time, during these conflict situations, girls are adopted, young girls, and which makes it difficult for people who would, even would love to, who have loved their children to go to school, to stop going to school because of the fear of girls being adopted at school. And they are used as sales slaves for some of these um, people who are at conflict. How women shape conflict? Over the years, from the pre-colonial African wars, women have done a lot of role from literature in shaping the way conflicts are. We have cases of the Aba women's riots in the southeastern Nigeria. And these women actually did a lot to ensure that the situation at that time changed. We also have the Egba women's riots in the southwest. And uh, we also have an example of the Queen Amina of Zari. This woman led the victory of her people. The Queen Moremi of Ife was the one who actually rescued her people by negotiating with the opposite side. And these are women, examples of women that actually shaped the way the conflict situation had taken place. And in recent times, we have women's nonviolent protests against Chevron in Escavos in Nigeria. And we have also have cases of some initiative that are set up by women, local women, but they take advantage of the platform available to them through the involvement of some organization, like the Galaxy for Women. This Galaxy for Women is a youth-led organization concerned with the promotion of um, peace culture in some communities in Nigeria. And we also have Electa that is all actually co-funded, um, basically looking at our behavioral change in communities and kind of enforcing capacity development to increase women's participation in politics. And so these are some of the initiatives that as women have put in place to shape the way conflict is done or to shape the effect of conflict in Nigeria from literature. And so, substantially, found that the inclusion of women and civil society groups 
in a peace negotiation kind of make resulting agreements 64% less likely to fail. And according to another study, about 35% more likely to last at least 15 years. That is why it is important to include women, not just seeing women as victims of violence, but also seeing them as being able to participate and shape the way uh, conflict situation is being done. And so in spite of these low sociocultural status where we have displaced women, but women tend to still use their agency from literature through peace building and political mobilization and engagement. And this actually helps to compensate for shortfalls in policy and humanitarian responses. Thank you.